A little bit different, as you might tell. We see some people dressed up here in the front. But we have our Christmas program this year, so we're excited that you can be here to join us as we take part in this today. So let's just open up in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this time of season, Lord, that we can anticipate uh, celebrating your birth, Lord, and that uh, we can anticipate your return someday down the road. So, Lord, I thank you today as we gather to worship and celebrate uh, your birth here today with this program. We thank you for all this in your name. Amen. This is the third Sunday of Advent. Joy. In a letter to some of the first Christians, the Apostle Paul writes, Your love must be real. Hate what is evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like brothers and sisters. Give each other more honor than you want for yourselves. Do not be lazy, but work hard, serving the Lord with all your heart. Be joyful because you have hope. Be patient when trouble comes and pray at all times. Today we light the candle of joy. In the middle of all the holiday craziness, when we're trying to clean the house before company comes, or worrying about how we're going to pay for everything we maybe shouldn't have bought, sometimes we lose our joy. When we look at these candles and the light they give, picture the pure joy we see when a baby smiles, with no fear for the future. That's the gift God wants to give us, love and hope and joy as we wait for Jesus to return. At this time, we're going to invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare to take offering. We're going to do things a little different today. We don't have any announcements or our usual prayer time. So make sure you're checking out your bulletin for any uh, events coming up here in the rest of this month and New Year. But also, uh, there's going to be some hymns sung throughout our program, and we encourage you to join in with everybody as uh, we sing those hymns together. So I'll ask the ushers to come forward at this time as we pray to take our offering. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give back what you've given to us, Lord, today as we receive our offering. So, Lord, we pray that you would bless these tithes and offerings, Lord, and bless these funds to go towards ministry, not only in this community here, but the surrounding area, Lord. And so we thank you that we can take and give back all that you've blessed us with in your name. Amen. <laughs>
from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And please join us as we sing, O Come All You Faithful, 145. And you may remain seated. Tell him on the phone, Lord, just as he's talking to you. 
You certainly are.
in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exact, the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star had, that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Join us as we sing What Child Is This? Hymn number 137. Christmas. God's Son came to earth, born as a baby in a manger. 
It's the true meaning of Christmas. It's as true today as it was for the Magi, as true as it was for a group of lowly shepherds working in the field. You're quiet out tonight. Yep. Ah. Ah. You know, a quiet night like this, a shepherd can go crazy. Bah. It does. Bah. Yep. You bet it does. Pretty soon you're seeing strange sights. You're hearing strange noises. Bah. Ah. You mean like a, a mirage? <laughs> Worse than a mirage. Why, I had a buddy named Louie. <coughs> On a quiet night like this, he went mad. Ah. He thought he saw aliens landing in yonder pasture. Oh, oh. oh. Ah, I'm talking sheep. What? There's no such thing as a talking sheep. Yeah, there is. I can hear. Hey, what's all the racket? Trying to get some sleep out here. Ah. <laughs> I don't hear anything. I just hear ba ba ba. But there, there's a talking sheep. I can hear him. Can you hear him? Yep. Yes. There's no such thing. Your mind's playing tricks on you. Tricks, I say. Tricks. Ah, look, look there. There's a talking sheep there. Come on. No, there's no talking sheep. Ah. You didn't hear it? No, I hear nothing. I hear nothing but ba ba ba. There is no talking sheep. Tricks on you. Silly so shepherd tricks are for kids. Oh. What's the matter? Don't you like my bad jokes? <laughs> no, where were we? Ah. Ah. Sure is quiet now. Ah.
Well, the story of the Magi reminds us that even the wise and the learned recognize how special Jesus was. The true essence of the Christmas story is that you don't have to be special to make the journey to Bethlehem. You just have to be willing. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Then the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's sing Go Tell It on the Mountain, hymn number 138. Well, some traveled many miles to get to Bethlehem, 
Some came from just around the corner. As the angels told the shepherds, the message of the Messiah is for everyone. Rich, poor, young, old, man, woman, Jew, or Gentile. Jesus is God's love in the flesh, and his love knows no bounds, no limits, no categories. It doesn't matter who you are or where you've been. You can come to Bethlehem too and meet the newborn king. But be ready, the journey doesn't end at Bethlehem. Jesus' journey and the journey of those who follow him is just the beginning. So here we are at last. Father and Son, seems so strange to me in this position. If you are who everyone says you are, it should be you holding me, not me holding you. I don't know why you chose me to be the one to father you. I can only imagine how much more I will learn from you than you will ever learn from me. Is it true what they say about you? The Magi says you're the one Isaiah spoke of. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Mary said your name is Jesus, the Deliverer. And you come to save your people. The shepherds said you come not just for the Jews, but for the whole world. Then there are the others, Simeon and Anna. They've been waiting a long time to see you. They praised your father, our heavenly father, for letting them see you. And they spoke of terrible things. People will rise and fall because of you. Tragedy will come, and your mother, my wife, will suffer because of you. How can all this be? If you're the mighty God and Prince of Peace, how can you also be the bringer of so much turmoil? Have you come to drive out the Romans, or have you come for something greater? I'm sorry, it's not fair to ask you all this. Tonight, you're completely dependent on us. Just a baby who needs nourishment and sleep. Rest well, my son. I'm sure these things will come clear in time. I still wish someone would tell me why I was chosen to be your dad. I may come from the line of David, but there is someone in Israel who can say the same. I'm no one special, I'm just a carpenter. You could have had such a much easier life with someone else. Something tells me you didn't come here to live the easy life. I don't know what lies ahead for you, but I know this. I'm grateful that you're finally here. God's love knows no bounds. Jesus came for all people. Jesus would not stay a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. He would grow and become strong filled with wisdom and the grace of God. He would become a man and travel the countryside telling the people good news that God loves them. That love would eventually send Jesus to the cross. Although Jesus knew no sin, he suffered the indignity of a criminal's execution to pay the debt for our sin. He would die, and after three days, Jesus was raised to life again. Redemption is finally, completely, forever fulfilled in Jesus Christ. This is the journey that God calls each of us on. The journey that leads us to salvation, to redemption, to love, to Jesus. Once we get on this road, we will never be the same again. Again from Isaiah chapter 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it. With justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Please stand as we sing Joy to the World, 125, verses 1 and 4.
story, right? One that changes lives, changes minds, changes hearts. And so I thank you today for joining us for this wonderful program. I want to thank everybody who took part, all the kids, all the adults. You guys did an awesome job. Thank you so much. And a special thank you to Janet, our director, organizer, <laughs> And so we thank you for all that you did. After the service, immediately after, please join us. We've got some soup, Christmas cookies. You're all welcome to stay. We'd appreciate it if you'd spend some time visiting, fellowshipping together uh, right after the service here. If anybody would like to take pictures, we're going to have the kids come up front, the adults, everyone come up on stage here. So if anybody would like to get photos, you can do that also afterwards. Uh, one other thing coming up here, all these Christmas lights on the stage. Kids, there's a challenge for you. If you can guess how many lights are up here without actually coming up and counting, <laughs> find Mark. He's in the back, black shirt, red and maroon tie. You can't miss him. Give him a number of your guess. There's a prize for the winner. Um, let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you sent your son oh so long ago. Lord, to be born not in a palace, not in royalty, Lord, but in a lowly manger. Lord, that you spread the word first to shepherds. Lord, because he would bring a message that wouldn't be just for those in power, or those with wealth or might, but Lord, a message for everybody. Because it's a message that changes everybody's lives. So we thank you that we can gather here today and celebrate that with this amazing program. In your name, amen. We'll close with this. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.